Hey everybody, welcome to another C-SPAN episode. This is gonna, we're gonna call this Mondays with Matt and uh, uh, do this drawing thing here. So today, I just wanted to say thank you to our C-SPAN sponsors, CIBC, thank you very much for helping us bring this to you guys. And we're gonna do another drawing tutorial. All you guys need is a piece of paper and a pencil. And if you've got one, an eraser would be super helpful as well. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to draw a fish. Now, specifically, we're gonna draw a Goliath grouper. That's gonna come up in a little bit. But first, I just wanna do a basic fish. Like, how do you draw a fish? So uh, get ready and remember, if I'm going too fast or anything, just watch this back again, pause it and rewind it and all that good stuff. So uh, again, my name is Matt and welcome to Mondays with Matt. All right, here we go. So to draw a fish, it's gonna be a lot like a shark because sharks are fish, but we're gonna do a bony fish with a bony skeleton. So basically I'm just gonna do kind of a uh, upside down line, like a little frowny face and a little happy face. This is a lot like our shark, right? Almost the same exact thing. Um, round this off. You could also say this maybe looks a little bit like a football Kind of darken this up. I'm going to switch to my darker pencil here so you guys make sure you guys can see it. If you're wondering what I'm using, they're just art pencils. They're not anything super fancy or special. You can use any kind of pencil that you want. The thing that makes an art pencil an art pencil is they have different hardnesses of the lead. So this is what is called an 8B, which means that it's kind of a, a very soft leaded pencil. So that's what I'm using here. It makes it a little bit darker. So here we go. All right, so we've got our football shape here, and then we're gonna add our tail. So just like with the shark, it's gonna be triangles, and there's a lot of different types of tails you can have with fish. You know, fish can have tails that look like this. They can have tails that look like this. They can have tails that look like this. Uh, you can make whatever kind of tail you want for your fish. Depends on what kind of fish you're drawing. I'm gonna give this fish a tail kind of like this. So I'm gonna give it a triangle here, and a triangle there, it's, it looks a lot like our shark, right? Almost just like our shark. Here's where it's gonna get different. We're gonna add these fins in. Now they have the same basic fins that the sharks have. So they have that dorsal fin and the second dorsal fin. But for this fish, I'm gonna add this back secondary dorsal fin first, and I'm gonna make it more round. So here's one of our first differences there. And uh, different fish have different shaped dorsal fins. Look at pictures of fish, lots of different types of fish. And this will give you an idea of, of how to make your own fish. Now, uh, this primary dorsal fin, I'm going to make it, we're going to make it kind of fun. It's going to come up like this, like that. And I'm going to put some lines here. Now, a lot of times fish will have this dorsal fin laying down. And uh, sometimes it's long like this, sometimes it's short. Remember, this is your fish, however you want to make it. I'm going to give this fish a little fin down here to make it a little bit rounded as well. Give it some little fin lines. And I'm also going to give this fish uh, a little pectoral fin here. I'm just gonna make it a little triangle. And you can maybe see the other one on the other side. So I've got two triangles there, just like so. There we go. Now, we need one more fin, but in order to draw that fin, I need a reference. So remember that fish have gills. Now sharks, if you remember from last week, have five gills, but most fish, their gills are underneath something called a gill plate. And so what I wanna do is follow this line down and somewhere around here, I'm gonna just make a curvy line like this. That's the gill plate. Now really the gills are underneath there. The water goes in the fish's mouth, goes over those gills and the fish gets all the oxygen that it needs. But this other fin, this pectoral fin, which these are pelvic fins, I think I might've called them pectoral fins. This is the pectoral fin, it's gonna be right behind the gill right here. So I'm gonna make this like a little circle, just like so. That's one way to do this fin. I could also have done this for the fin. It's another way you could make it. Different fish have different shaped fins. You make your fish the way you want. I'm gonna add some of these rays to this. Here, this is a super simple fish. Now we still need to add the mouth and the eye. So uh, the mouth of the fish, the way that I like to draw it, most fish have this interesting fish lip. You know the term fish lips, well, it's like a little triangle here, just like so. And then uh, the bottom lip comes out here. Does that look like a fish face? I think it looks like a fish face, right? 
It's a fishy face thing. Uh, all right, now we need the eye, and the eye is going to be right in this area here, over the mouth. Some fish have really big eyes. Some fish have really small eyes. Um, there's a fish called a soldier fish or squirrel fish. They have huge eyes. If I was doing that fish, it'd be like this big, but we're not doing that fish. So uh, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to uh, give this fish a little pupil here. And I always like to give a little light reflection. So what I mean by that is, let's say this is our eye here, okay? And then here's our pupil in the middle. But what I do is I, I leave a circle. It's like the light reflecting off of it there. It just makes our fish eye look a little bit more realistic. Now, they also need some nares here, right up there like that. And there you have your basic fish. And, and the cool thing about this fish is that you can draw it over and over again. You can make it skinnier. You can make it really funky shaped like this. Um, and then you can add patterns to it. So fish have all different types of patterns. Some of them don't have any pattern at all. Uh, some of them have what we call bars, which would be lines going down like this. Some of them have stripes, which would go this way, or streaks. Some of them have spots or splotches or speckles. You can make your fish however you want, or look at some real fish and try and do a fish just like one that you actually see in real life. And hello, my mom is watching. Uh, hello, mom, and so is Kimbra, and uh, our dog Reno is watching. Hey, Reno. Uh, so here we go. So here's our basic fish, and I wanna move on now to draw this Goliath grouper, because the Goliath grouper is a really cool fish, and we have one here named Cletus, and Cletus is really, really cool. Now, not only is Cletus a Goliath grouper, but Cletus has been here since the aquarium opened in 1995. So um, you go, well, he's at least 25 years old. Actually, he's probably 30, over 30 years old, maybe 31 years old, something like that. Uh, he is not, I won't say he's an old fish because Goliath groupers may live over 50 years, but uh, you know, he's, he's not a baby fish either. But uh, he is pretty special and he's helping us to celebrate our birthday, which by the way, if you tune in tomorrow, you can see my friend Tom doing aqua tunes and there's gonna be some birthday celebrations. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So make sure you tune in tomorrow at 10 o'clock as well. But let's get on with our Goliath grouper. Now, um, this one's gonna be a little bit more complicated of a drawing than our first fish, but it's all the same principles are there. So here's what you wanna do. To get better at drawing, people sometimes say, Matt, how are you so good at drawing? And I say, well, it's because I draw a lot. I draw all the time, it's hard work. Just like musical instrument, just like playing a sport, uh, the more you practice, the better you get. And I have a lot of room to get better myself. So I keep practicing all the time. But uh, just keep, don't draw one fish, don't draw one shark, draw 100 sharks, 200 fish. And by the time you get through with that, if you look at your 100th fish and your 10th fish, you're gonna see a big improvement. So let's get on with this Goliath grouper here. We'll draw Cletus. We're gonna start again with this line on the top, but I'm gonna be a little more careful with this line. So what I wanna do is I wanna watch how this curve is. It's not just a like that. We're giving a little more care to this kind of hump shape back here. And then uh, over here on the bottom, I'm gonna kind of bring this down. Still have sort of our, our happy face here, but I'm going to then abruptly kind of bring it up like that. There we go. Here's our general body form of the Goliath grouper. Now look, this is a fish. They have to swim through the water. They have to be hydrodynamic, which means that they're gonna go through the water without as much effort. So fish that are really fast, like say a barracuda, they have a really streamlined body for really, boom, going through the water quick. Goliath groupers, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of slow. They kind of just linger and hang out on the bottom. They don't have to move too fast, but they still wanna save some energy. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna take this tail part here. This is called the peduncle, which is one of my favorite words. And uh, we're gonna just extend this out here. And I'm just gonna give this a little curve. Okay, and the tail, the caudal fin, is gonna come off of this. Now, grouper caudal fins are very kind of lobey or rounded. So we're gonna bring this out like this. And then this is kind of a, a round curve. And then this is sort of round as well. There we go. 
Now, honestly, one of the things that, that helps you to draw, though, is you want to look at references. You want to look at pictures. And one of the reasons you want to do that is so that you can see these shapes and also you can compare sizes. Now, when I first drew this, it's not really big enough. I'm looking at a little reference from another drawing I did to practice this. I practiced this. That tells you something, right? And, uh, and I could see that my tail was a little small. So now the tail is the right size. So here we go. Now we're going to add some more of these fins. Now, groupers like our Goliath grouper, they have two dorsal fins, but the second one starts about right here. And some, a lot of times they, they have that sort of down. So I'm just going to make it this shape. It goes almost to the peduncle there. And we'll draw some rays on that. It's our secondary dorsal fin. Up here, they have, instead of a regular fin, they have these dorsal spines. And one of the things that makes Goliath groupers different than other similar looking species is that these dorsal spines are all about the same height. So on some, they're different heights, uh, but not on, the, not on the Goliath grouper. So these are easy, they're just little triangles. And I'm gonna try and make them about the same height. There we go. A lot of times they'll have these down, they can stick them up, you know, if they're feeling like they want to be a little wild that day or something, but, uh, but there you have it. Now, down here they have a fin as well, and this one is kind of, kind of rounded, kind of comes out a little bit and then sort of round right there. And, uh, oops, I should be consistent here with my fin rays, right? There we go. Okay, and now, now we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the other fish, only I'm gonna to wait to do the uh, pelvic fins as well. I'm gonna get, uh, get the gills on here. So we're gonna come down here, follow this line under the jaw, and then we're gonna come up. And the Goliath grouper, their gill slit sort of comes over like this, and then sort of goes up like that a little bit. There we go. And then our fins, our pectoral fins, come off here. And they're sort of rounded, but I'm going to give this little curve right here just to make it more interesting. And then we're going to follow this around with these rays here. Now, I see some people are making requests. I will try and do one maybe at the end if we have some time, but also... Um, keep those requests coming because if we're going to keep doing these i will be looking for things to draw in the future and uh, i maybe i'll maybe i'll draw the thing that you are suggesting down here now we're going to attach our pelvic fins here and a lot of times with the grouper they kind of keep these tucked away but i just want to draw so you know that it exists as a fin there we go starting to look like our grouper we need to do the mouth now one of the things that groupers are famous for is having a huge mouth I read on a sign by our Goliath grouper Cletus that he specifically likes to eat uh, ladyfish and mackerel. That's one of the things he likes to eat here. I heard, though, that Goliath grouper don't eat clownfish, and, and the reason is they taste funny. All right, so let's get this mouth here down like that. Nice big mouth. Little curve. There we go. And uh, there's the top. There's our top jaw here. And here's where the eraser comes in. So you've got an eraser. You can erase this bottom line. I'm just gonna sort of erase mine. Another, another good key is to, when you're drawing these original lines, draw them light. Now I'm drawing them dark so you guys can see them. But if you draw them light, then it's easier to, to get these guidelines and, and fix it. But the mouth comes out right here. I'm gonna leave it open a little bit. And they got this beautiful jaw right here. Look at that. So our Goliath grouper mouth. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil. One of the disadvantages to using an 8B pencil with very soft graphite is that it goes dull really quickly. Sometimes you want a dull pencil. It's not always the best thing to have a sharp pencil, but in this case, we want it to be sharp. We're gonna add Cletus's eyes, and again, they're right up here. They're pretty high up. Right there. And uh, Cletus has these beautiful bulging eyes. He can kind of move them around like a little periscope. Give him a little line there. Put his little nair in there. There we go. It's Cletus. What a beautiful fish. Now, uh, if you see pictures of Goliath Grouper, and you should all go look at pictures of Goliath Grouper after this is over, 
you may find that they they look different depending on which Goliath group you're looking at. Now, Cletus has a lot of spots, so we're going to give him some spots. But he's mostly sort of a grayish colored fish. Give him some variable spots here and there. Sometimes they have spots on their fins as well. And if I was going to do this um, for longer, maybe I would shade it and everything and, and give it some different coloration. There are a lot of Goliath groupers, though, that actually do have some stripes and, or I should say, bars and things like that. Uh, if you look online, you can see a picture like that. That's kind of your standard look of a Goliath grouper, but they don't always have all these markings. But if they did, maybe I could just do a little bar here like this. The beautiful thing about this is that all Goliath groupers are different. So you can do your Goliath grouper markings however you want. There we go. Now Goliath groupers are, are a protected fish and that's important. They've been protected since 1990 uh, because they were kind of overfished and uh, they, they grow pretty slowly. So we want to get our population back up, and that takes a long time. Their population is starting to rebound, but we need to keep protecting them and make sure that we're not fishing for them and that they're not getting caught as bycatch and that sort of thing. Because here's the thing, Cletus here, Cletus is about 52 inches long, and uh, he weighs about 200 pounds. Now you go, that's a big fish, Matt. But the thing is, Goliath grouper can potentially get close to eight feet long and weigh 800 pounds. So Cletus is still a growing boy. That's all I'm saying. All right, now, another cool thing about Goliath groupers and a lot of groupers is that they, uh, they have a lot of groupies. And what I mean by that is they have a lot of fish uh, and other things that like to, to help them out. There's something called a cleaning station, and you get these little fish that are called wrasses. Uh, I'm sorry, not wrasses. They're called gobies. Sometimes some wrasses do these as well. But they're called gobies. Like in our habitat here at the Florida Aquarium, we have some little neon gobies. They're little fish. They have a more slender body like this. And I'm not looking at a picture, so this isn't going to be super accurate. But these little fish, are they're not this big compared to Cletus. They're like that big compared to Cletus. And what they do is they will hang out on Cletus. They'll clean up any little specks or anything he's got on him. He'll open his mouth. He'll open his gills and let those fish get in there and really give him a good cleaning. It's a, it's a cleaning station. Very, very cool. But this is our Goliath grouper, and um, I hope you guys do come back tomorrow to enjoy our birthday. Since we have a little bit of time, I will see if I can take some requests, see what anybody is wanting me to draw out there, and, uh, and we'll give it a go. So let me move to a fresh sheet of paper. So what do we have here? I know that a lot of people have been asking for uh, dolphins and penguins. Those are the ones I know I saw a lot of last week. Uh, so maybe I'll do one of those again. Keep in mind, we can, we can look at doing some of these in the future. Uh, let's see. Nope. All right, I'm gonna look for a picture of an African penguin, because that's what we have here at the Florida Aquarium. And we'll see if we can do one of those here for you. I gotta look at a reference though. I do see the penguins a lot, but not enough to just draw it out of my memory. What happens is the more you draw stuff, you build up this sort of memory in your brain, and then you can, you can do more things just completely out of memory. You have like a library you can reference, but uh, for me, penguin is not part of it. So, <laughs> so I found a picture of a, of a penguin. We're gonna give it our best shot here. And a uh, little African penguin is adorable. So uh, let's see, the one I, I have a picture of is, is standing. And he's got his back kind of curved like this. Whenever you draw something, you're always looking at curves and lines. Don't think of it as a penguin. Think of it as a bunch of lines. And how do they relate to one another? You know, how, how long is this line compared to this line? That sort of thing. Get that beak in there. some eyes, give it a 
give them a little highlight there. Now this penguin's probably gonna look weird until I color it in though, because one of the things about penguins, of course, is that they have this very specific coloration. And if you see a penguin that doesn't have that coloration, well, it might not look much like a penguin. So we'll see what it looks like before I add some of these markings and stuff, and then maybe I'll add a little bit of shade to it, just so it looks more penguinish, penguin-like. Little flipper here. Another one coming out over here. And look, here's another thing. Don't be afraid to draw stuff. Don't be afraid to, to take a chance, to mess up. This is not going to be a beautiful, wonderful, 100% awesome penguin because I'm not a penguin drawer. So, uh, But that's okay because the way you become good at drawing something is by practicing, like I said before. And don't feel bad if you don't make the most beautiful grouper or penguin the first try because nobody does their best the first time they do something. Just keep at it, and you'll be drawing excellent groupers and penguins before you know it. Now here's our penguin without any markings, and he looks pretty funny. So we're gonna add the lines here. They have this black and white. I talked about counter shading with our sharks. Penguins have this as well. Pretty extreme version, right? They're, they're like the the fancy tuxedo wearers of the animal kingdom. A little bar here going around. And then his eye, which I may have made a little too high there, but we'll fix it. It's right on that line. <laughs> he still doesn't look very penguin-like, does he? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some quick shading here and see if that helps. Let's see if that helps our penguin look more like a penguin. And this is important to remember because when you are drawing something, if you haven't added certain details, you may think it's not looking right, and then you add the details, and suddenly it kind of looks right. I don't know if that's going to happen with our penguin or not. We'll have to see. <laughs> These penguins have dark feet. There we go. This other fin over here is all black. I've kind of lost his mouth here. <laughs> there we go. Looks a little better, right? I could do it again and it would probably come out better, but uh, but that helps. Adding that shading, I think in this case, kind of helped our penguin out. <laughs> what do you guys think? Is it okay? Did our penguin do okay? All right, let's see. Do we have time for one more maybe? Okay, let's see. We'll do one more request here. Let's see what I can find. Now I know some of the things you guys are requesting are ones that I do want to do in the near future, so I don't want to um, I don't want to do any of those yet. But let's see what else do we have here. Oh well, you know what? Let's do this since we're on the fish theme. Somebody said Nemo, and so Nemo is a, is a clownfish. And so I'll try and do a, uh, a clownfish. Now there's lots of, a lot of different types or species of clownfish. Um, so we'll try and find a picture of the clownfish that Nemo is, which is pretty easy to find. They're like the standard basic clownfish that you've got out there. I'll just pull up a reference here. All right, so our clownfish we're gonna do kind of the same thing, only I'm gonna make this nose really rounded. Don't forget to post your pictures in this 
stream in the comments so that we can see what you guys are doing. Last week, I got a lot of people that posted pictures of their sharks and their squids, and it was so cool. I was so impressed by you got what you guys are doing out there. Really awesome stuff. So here's our, our clownfish tail fin there. And then uh, we'll give the clownfish a little secondary dorsal fin. I'm not gonna add any lines to these fins yet because there's some specific colors that make a clownfish a clownfish. There, dorsal fins, front dorsal fins a little bit closer to the front of the body. And we're gonna, the gill's not as easy to see, but the gill's a little bit closer up as well. And we'll give this big pectoral fin here. All right, and then we're gonna give, now the fish, this fish doesn't have a really obvious mouth. So we're just gonna give him a little bit bitty mouth like this. Not too much detail there. Uh, we're gonna give him an eye, which is gonna be right around here. And for him, I might just make the whole thing mostly colored in there. Now we're gonna add what makes a clownfish a clownfish, which are those markings. So uh, they have these beautiful white bars on them. They're of course an orange fish. Everybody knows what a clownfish looks like, right? <laughs> we'll add another one right back here. And here's something that I noticed from my reference is that this bar actually goes between these two fins. So these can help you to make your drawing if you if you look at where some of these markings go. It might give you clues as to where to put different lines and stuff. And I'm making these kind of thick because there's sort of a black outline on all these white bars here. And even on this fin, now I could add a little bit of shape there. A little bit of shape there. This one's got some black on it as well. Here we go. This clownfish looks a little funny. I know I already used that joke, but. All right. And then finally our caudal fin has some black on the outside here. And if you colored this orange and black and white, it would look even more like a clownfish, but I think that probably, most people would see that and know that that is that is one of our clownfish. Now I can see from my reference that I did this wrong. This this fin actually should have been all the way over here. So that's what I'm talking about, comparing different lines and stuff. That's why you want to go in lightly and then you can add more detail later. All right, but I can see by the time that it is time that we wrap things up. So once again, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you catch us next week and tomorrow. Don't forget, is our birthday celebration, 25 years Tomorrow, the Florida Aquarium will have been open, which is, I think, a great cause to celebrate. And we're going to do that with Tom and his Aquatoons and maybe some extra birthday celebrations. Until next time, though, see you later.